we work with our SEN students and their parents to help them overcome any learning needs that they may have. Um, and what's really key in the lessons is that we support them um, at the differentiated level that they need, whether that be through the reading, through the writing, um, through specialist um, resources. Uh, so on arrival we get a lot of data on our um, new intake. We obviously have the key stage 2 data provided by the primary schools and their teacher assessments but we also do our own tests. So we might spend a lot of time reading for meaning with them and getting them to work out the clues that will help them to to understand more tricky meanings. So we might get them to look very closely at um, if they're not sure what a particular word might mean, what the words around it mean, and therefore what context it puts that word in. Uh, and then we do some assessments quite early on um, to see if we've got the setting quite right and to see um, whether we kind of agree with those assessments and think we've made the right decisions. Um, again, we, we, so we don't tell the students, we don't say, well, this is a test, or use the word test or assessment or anything like that. They just see it as kind of classwork but we will use it to um, make sure that we're, we're happy with those decisions. And we do that from day one um, to support them gain as much ground in year seven as they can. So then really by year eight, those difficulties that they maybe had early on in life are, if, if they are there, they're minimised, but um, hopefully we started to bridge the gap. And again, that, that comes back to self-belief. We would think about them always being on a table with at least one other ABLE student so that they then are able to support each other and bounce ideas that are quite critical and high level from each other. One of the things that we need to do is um, ensure that uh, we are teaching to a very high level. So the vocabulary that we use within the lessons, um, the contextual ideas that we use within the lessons, um, I will quite often be pitching it at degree level for the very able students because ultimately by the time they've got to a grade 9 they are then planning in year 12 and 13 to achieve an A star and at that point they're really writing at almost degree level at that point anyway. So to use a really com uh, complex and diverse vocabulary um, is really important. Something else that we would enc encourage uh, the students to do is to think about rather than doing extension work from doing different work to start with so that they might be when they've had the learning embedded they might then be given a task that stretches them in a different way so it might use um, it might focus on a particularly um, challenging theme it might focus on a critical interpretation of a text and really get them to rather than doing just more work to do work that then promotes higher order thinking and critical thinking right from the start. When we originally chose the text that we were going to be using, uh, we sat together as a team and had a, a big debate about which books would be interesting for our students. And because you've got to know your audience. Um, and so we were quite specific that when we looked at, um, for example, the literature books, that um, we knew that probably some of our students that perhaps weren't as high ability would probably be, would be fine with um, Charles Dickens. But then we decided that the higher ability students, those really high level students would be able to uh, work with something like uh, Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde because the, the concepts that are involved within that are more complex. The decisions that we make when planning for Key Stage 3, um, they really build towards uh, Key Stage 4 where our students are really happy to work independently and autonomously. Um, we develop a lot of uh, metacognitive approaches so the students are encouraged to reflect upon their learning, self, peer assess. Um, fill out PLCs, personal learning charts, um, look at where the gaps are and be, be really used to this by the time they get to Key Stage 4. They're so accustomed to doing this and it's, it's a, a dual um, aspect approach I guess because we're constantly assessing them, they're constantly assessing themselves and then we teach to the gaps and that's something that we do in Key Stage 3 and follows into Key Stage 4 as well. Mm -hmm.